This film isn't about the people who live in Drumchapel. It's about social control, political opportunism, and the contempt shown to working class families who live here. Like a primitive society, we have become people to be patronised, our community suitable only for the filming of television drama, our social problems subject matter for academics, and our poverty a shining light for reformers of every hue, all determined to save our souls while they clothe us in their cast-offs. We are society's underachievers, unemployable and socially deprived. Many of us are in fact declassed elements. How could the families who came here in the 1950s have ever envisaged the testament to political failure that Drumchapel has become? The scheme has become a massive slum with many sections of its people brutalised by poverty and unemployment. In many areas of the scheme, unemployment is in excess of 50%, with murder and rape now accepted with a degree of cynicism. Once described as a desert with windows, its character has increasingly taken on the mantle of a custodial sentence with no hope of parole. The scheme, like many other council estates, is in a spiral of social and economic decline, and as you see it today, it's the best it will ever be. With no shortage of groups in the community, their number is taken as an indicator of the community's stability and strength, when in fact the community is bereft of any real unity or representation. Many community groups flourish, be it briefly, under the wing of the social work department, housing or education, all of whom require a price to be paid. Successive years of keep it non-political and the non-existence of any political leadership has resulted in a scheme whose political impotence is matched only by its apathy. The only growth industries are dope and money lending, both of which for many have become the alternative economy. For those in work, life's goal is a house elsewhere. For those without work, it's gyro day. And I remember coming up there one day, and it was, we walked up, it was Urakimor, it was up the hill, but I didn't know uh, that it was up the hill at the time. And I was just uh, really punch drunk, I think, that the whole the place, and I couldn't believe how anybody could live here. And I says, Aggie, how, can you, how could you stay in this place? How can you live here? And I didn't know what it was at the time. It was just the, the, all the windies. And I know Billy Connolly's mentioned it in the, the, the songs that he's, say, he's written and sung. Uh, but I just, the, the, it was anonymous and there was nothing uh, personal or, uh, oh, it was just totally, just, Faceless, all these windies and the winds and the streets and everything just the very same, row after row after row the same, and we narrow streets and everything. Uh, and I was just glad to get out. I felt as if when we had waited for ages in a bus to get back, back into Mary Hill, and I was just glad, relieved to get out of this place. I've been doing quite early, doing the shopping centre. Uh, it was a Monday morning, uh, we all listened, it was about 11 o'clock and there was a young lassie, she must just have been about 20 or 21 um, and she had a wee, there was a wee being in a pram and she, I think she'd, she'd either come out of the freeze bear or was passing through that way and she stopped the pram and she had another wee boy there, maybe about four and he, the wee boy was greeting or something and she just stopped in the middle of the shopping centre and she was 
Hey, come here, you fucking bastard. Come here. You know, just, just that, the whole, oh, just the whole thing about it that really sums up the, I uh, know deprivation's a uh, word and it's bandied about and poverty and the hopelessness, but uh, I thought she'd, uh, she must have been queuing in that post office since early morning with the two wains and the wain and the pram and the wee boy at four. Uh, and this, this is it and this is the life. I think when I ask you where, where you come from, and you do deny it, or you say just outside Glasgow, or, uh, or thereabouts, say, uh, because drum chapels associated, I think we squalor, and uh, that you must have failed, you must have done something, rang along the line somewhere to have ended up in drum chapel, that, you, that there's nobody would have. Uh, Nobody would stay there through choice. I mean, you wouldn't apply for a house in Drum Chapel. Who would? Who would apply for a house in Drum Chapel? Nobody, ever. The old slums we left behind, the tenements of Partick and Mary Hill, have either been demolished to make way for private builders or refurbished, now housing the ranks of the upwardly mobile, teachers, community workers and the young professional. While the painted gables and the sandblasted facades of the old tenements indicate hope for the future, the smoke blackened shell is our testament to the commitment and professionalism of the local housing management department. Many of our homes resemble dungeons the walls black with fungus and slime. Row upon row of multicoloured fencing only serves to reinforce our existing social and economic incarceration. Our children live and grow in an environment which reflects a prison mentality. Environmental improvements mean bars, slabs and concrete. All of it carried out with the sanction of the local community worthy or faltering tenants group. Despite all the talk of improving the scheme, thousands want to leave. With the sale of the better housing stock, thousands never will.
a scheme that cries out for help, we are bought off, patronised and played off against each other. We participate in a whole host of groups, forums and committees, all of them firmly under the control of the statutory authorities. Our main means of expression, instead of being sought after and used as a voice of the community, is simply one more giveaway news sheet containing copy that reflects both its independence and the impotence of its editorial content. In our desperation to find work, we give respectability to the myriad of YTS, MSC and CEP schemes that masquerade as legitimate employment. We condemn our young people to a future as garden scavengers, while we proudly hoist up the flag of self-help, entrepreneurism and community business, quote, the relief of poverty by the alleviation of unemployment, ideas that are resplendent only in their Victorian morality, we sow seeds of hope where none exist. Even our unemployed, who have been robbed of everything, have only limited authority in the day-to-day -day running of their own centre. In a society of extremes, it's become a bastion of moderation. Instead of challenging our pauperisation, we play pool, push weights and search for jobs that aren't there. We have all but abandoned political struggle and in doing so have opened the gates to the sectarian. When the multinationals left, they left behind not just the vacant space and piles of broken asbestos. They left behind the memories of full employment, a decent wage and hope for the future. When we talk of employment now, do we mean a place on a government course or the service industries? Of these there's no shortage. In our enforced leisure hours, we can blot out our worries through the pub, the bingo or the bookies. Once referred to as a terrific new innovation, cable television, a new service industry, drains thousands of pounds from our local economy with little or no financial return. In an attempt to stem the social and economic collapse of the community, the statutory authorities have established the Drum Chapel Initiative, a think tank, a compilation of the very best of bureaucracy, totally divorced from those it represents. If you applied for the post of initiative director, you would have received a collection of tourist brochures, brief details about the scheme, a map of handy golf courses and a Glasgow's Miles Better bag. Glasgow may be the city of culture and Glasgow may be miles better, but better for whom? Certainly not better for the people of Drumchapel or the working class families in the other peripheral estates. They talk of teaching us cottage industries, a working class community reduced to selling tourists, bric-a-brac and beads. 
By accepting the bureaucrats' rules, we condone the poverty, the squalor and the deprivation. For over 30 years, we have accepted the mistakes, the mismanagement and the duplicity of the professionals, the officials and the politicians. For over 30 years, we have accepted what is less than ours by right, and what's worse, we have accepted it in the name of our children. Our elected organisations, tenants groups and community councils are all but dead. Those who manage them, wrapped up in the patronage that for years has emasculated any real struggle. If we can use the past as an example, the scheme can only continue to decline. Our young people have no money and no work. For many, the slogan, no dope, no hope, is becoming a reality. In the eyes of the authorities, we are the solvent abusers, carly drinkers, drug takers, rent defaulters, child abusers, the at risk and the liable to offend. We are an area of priority treatment. When our children ask us, not what's for tea, but is there anything for it? When a family has only cream crackers to eat three days before their next gyro. When we can walk past this and not notice it, or what's worse, when we defend it as a good place in which to live, then we have indeed come a long way. Um, and I got married at 16 to get it, although I didn't know what it was then, uh, and no, so I had Monday night, and I've um, sitting here about a week for a bottle, and, I, and I'm 29, and my lasses are big, and there's, there's fuck all, do you know what I mean? And um, where's the hope and the dreams? I know you, but you thought it was for you, that you're a bit different for everybody else, and you're not.